Hello everyone, my name is Saura and welcome to the third devlog of Mortal Glory 2, a turn-based gladiator roguelike. Right off the bat a quick announcement that just yesterday I published the Steam page for Mortal Glory 2. I'll have the link in the description so go check it out, wishlist if you're interested and get a sneak peek of what's to come in future devlogs. So in the last two devlogs I create the basic movement system for the game and then also this separate map system kind of like in the Slate Spire but I decided to go back to the like combat scene in this devlog and focus on the targeting system of the game. This is one major aspect I wanted to improve when compared to the first game because <laughs> actually yeah, I don't know, it's hard to notice, but in the first one the targeting system is <laughs> kind of very very simple. <clears throat> I mean, on the screen when you see like this squares where you can target a skill or an ability, those are actually like static sprites. I had something like <laughs> nine different sprites or something like that there. Just like an image laid on top of the screen that, okay, yeah, that's where you can target. And of course the code then handles the actual logic. But this time I figured I wanted something a bit more dynamic. I mean, for example, if I come up with different like targeting types, maybe something more custom, then <laughs> I don't want to create like new images for each of those and then there's one other aspect where the flexibility is also very handy which I will talk a bit more soon. First I just start with the melee targeting so basically just detecting the squares around a unit and putting a separate targeting square on top of each of those cells. There's no point in targeting walls though so then it was quite an easy change, just checked uh, which of those cells have a wall in them and if they do then just yeah, don't don't show the targeting square in those cells at all. At this point I figured that okay well the targeting squares don't look very nice visually at all so I wanted to improve on that front. So a very handy solution I came up with was this rule tile in the Unity's tile map system. Basically what it does is that it checks all the cells around one cell and then yeah if you have like those same rule ties in the nearby squares or <laughs> cells then yeah it knows kind of like what the visual should look like in the <laughs> middle cell. I don't know if my explanation makes any sense but yeah it's Fairly simple logic. You just need to give the rule tile a lot of different variations of the like visuals, all like, kind of like all the edge, edge squares and then the middle squares and yeah, all that stuff. And then it will do all the work for you to make it look visually nice in the game itself. So here I'm testing random like variations of targeting, randomly selecting the range and type of targeting. So I think I have something like three different targeting types, like the default square and then this like vertical horizontal like line, I don't know what that could be called. And then I think I also have this like star pattern that has the like vertical and horizontal lines and then also does like this diagonal lines on top of that. My rule tile is missing a few different like these visual variations so that's why there are these empty squares in it. I will add those later on, but at this point I couldn't be bothered with it since this is just a temporary graphic. Then one important feature related to targeting that I wanted to add to this game was line of sight. I mean in the first one I think I had some like very very simple line of sight. It was only with certain skills like I think those that are like, again, vertical or horizontal direct lines. So with those it was 
very easy to check if there was something blocking the targeting but then if you have like a square targeting uh, type of skill and then you need to check like a diagonal line that is not like exactly straight then yeah it gets a bit trickier but that's something that I wanted to add to this game so you can actually like take cover behind walls and it works like more natural and yeah. In case you're wondering how I did the line of sight system, at first I considered doing it with ray casts. So just shooting lasers target and checking if it actually like collides with the uh, square. But then yeah I don't know, somehow that didn't seem like a very elegant solution to me. I mean <laughs> I would have to shoot the lasers to like many different locations and I don't know if it would have an effect on performance. Maybe not, but still I didn't really like that. So what I'm doing instead is taking all the like outer cell uh, locations that the targeting can have and then I'm simply doing this kind of like I, I don't know what it could be called. I have like this vector to lurping script there that kind of like takes steps towards that end uh, coordinate and just checks if there is a wall uh, between the like starting coordinate and the end coordinate and if there is well then you know that the you know that the targeting cannot reach the end cell at all. This had a few quirks I needed to fix. I mean the step distance when checking is important so you don't accidentally skip through a wall tile or something like that. But then I also wanted to add some kind of like this easing to the edges so if there's like one pixel of wall I don't want that to stop the line of sight. I mean that could be very annoying in the game itself. So when I combine all these systems to one then I have a working dynamic flexible targeting system that also has a line of sight functionality in it. And the end result based on my testing works perfectly. Which is something I'm of course very happy about. Just ignore the <laughs> empty squares in the map. That's again due to the rule tile. Those are actually like targeted squares. It, it's just missing the visual. Here's another clip with a more simpler visualization on the targeting square so you can exactly see where the targeting with the line of sight like reaches to and if you're wondering why I have the statistics in the upper right corner active yeah I had a small scare with the script because when I was <coughs> testing it out I noticed that the game was lagging and freezing a lot when I had this like big targeting areas. So yes, worried that okay shit was my own solution to performance heavy or what. But it turns out no. I just had this like debug log command in the script itself that yeah it printed out I think the uh, like every square that was targeted so yeah when there was a big targeting area it was printing out a bunch of lines and in case you didn't know the debug logs <laughs> command is actually quite performance heavy so yeah if you're having performance issues it's a good idea to check that you don't have like unnecessary debug log <laughs> print commands there so yeah it's always good to check that but, and yeah, as you can see in the video, I have a very nice FPS despite how much targeting is going on. And that is the targeting system. And that's actually where I will end this devlog. In the next one, I'm going to be adding some brand new features to the combat. So, hope you're looking forward to that. But yeah, hey. If you liked the video, please like it and I would 
love to hear your comments in the comment section below and all that stuff and yeah hey thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one